All right, this is where my tablet's really going to come in handy. We're in Unit 4, page 51, working with measurements. It says, now you know how to measure the basic dimensions of length, volume, and mass. Later in this unit, you will learn about measuring other parameters that are important in process manufacturing. No matter what you measure, you probably will have to perform calculations with the measurements. Now, in this day and age, with spreadsheets and things like that, a lot of these calculations will be done for you. And the company will probably do that just to ensure, because even the best mathematician is going to forget to carry a one or write something down wrong or interchange a couple of numbers every now and then. So we do want to be as careful with that information as possible. We have several rules we want to look at here. So I'm trying to remember exactly what these slides say. Um, so they have here a couple of different examples. Let me pull up the drawing tool here. So um, for example, if we have term A, and A is just any variable, we might as well say X. So A plus A, or X plus X, we can say 2A. It's 2 times A. Uh, this is 2X. Uh, and this works because if you think about this, 3, and it's got to be the same number, so 3 is equal to 6. 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3. Okay, So the same thing goes for all of that. Okay. Um, the next thing, number two, uh, if you have numbers in front and they have the same variable, 3a plus 2a, you can simply do the mathematical function in front and uh, add them together since we're adding here and get 5a. Likewise, for the next step, if it's 3a minus 2a, then we subtract, we get 1a, which is just plain old regular a in that case. However, if we are tending to multiply, and they use the example of 4a times 2a, what we do here is we basically multiply everything. So 4 and 2 multiply out to be 8, and then we end up with a times a, so 8a squared is our final answer for that. And these are examples that are in the book. I'm not doing anything different there. Okay. And then, what about division? So we did um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. So let's take 4a and divide it by 2a. Uh, this is going to be pretty much exactly like normal. So 4 and 2 gets reduced to 2 and 1. And, of course, 2 divided by 1 is 2. And then a divided by a is going to be 1 over 1. So we, we basically end up with is 2 times 1 over 1 times 1, which is 2 over 1, which is 2. So uh, really a little bit different math. Hopefully this makes some sense to you. Um, I definitely would spend some time looking over the examples in the book. Um, I've just simply copied them up here as well. Okay. Uh, so let me take it off here, and we're going to go over to page 52, adding and subtracting. Okay. Um, and so now what we're doing in this section is we're actually using some real-world examples. Uh, so they use some, several examples, and I don't want to repeat the examples that they have there. Uh, but so let's say we had a measurement of 15 milliliters, and uh, we were measuring it, and the only cylinder we had was 100. And so we, the first one we measured was exactly 100. And I don't mean about 100. I mean up to the 100 line. So that's why I'm putting that decimal to indicate that it is exactly 100, okay? Whoops, excuse me. So in this case, then, 100 plus 15 is going to be 115 ml. And that is not a triangle. That's just my L goofed up, and I was trying to write it back, so I apologize for that. Okay, so I'm just making this example up. It's not actually in your book, okay? Um, if you subtract these numbers, so let's take the numbers and switch them around. So 100 milliliters minus 15 milliliters. 100 minus 15 is 85 milliliters. Okay. All right. So we want to um, take this. Let's uh, erase these. So I'm gonna erase this. Um, and then let's look at. Then they want to point out something, and I think it's a very good point here. Uh, we do this with an everyday example. So let's say you have a dollar. Let's say you have a five dollar bill. And you have a quarter. Actually, let me start over. Let's just say you got a dollar bill. We'll keep our math simple. And you have a quarter, which is 25 cents. And you have a dime. 
which is 10 cents. The problem here, the problem in our example that I'm writing up here is that this is in dollars and these are in cents. So we need to make sure that they're all in the same unit first before we go any further. Now because two of them are in cents, it's going to be a little bit easier for me just to change this first one into cents. So how many cents make a dollar? 100, right? Okay. So what I have here is I have 100 cents plus 25 cents plus 10 cents, which gives me 135 cents. I apologize. I'm still getting used to this pen. So 135 cents, that's written very poorly. And of course, if we convert that back into dollars by moving the decimal two places, it's a dollar thirty-five. Okay, buck thirty-five. Very simple math there. So let's erase it and move on to the next slide. All right, so now we have multiplying and dividing. Um, and again, we just want to point out. So, like, let's say you're at your house and you're measuring out your house, and your house it has a room that is 10 foot by 20 foot and you're trying to figure out how much carpet to buy to occupy that room it's pretty straightforward to do so what you're going to do is take 10 times 20 which is 200 and then foot times foot becomes foot squared <coughs> pardon me um, likewise, if we had 20 foot and we were dividing it by 10 feet, come on tablet, okay, then 20 over 10 would be 2 and foot over foot would cancel out, so we ended up with just 2. Okay, big whoop. Uh, so that's what we end up with there. All right, um, so now we're on page 53 of your uh, book. It says working with units that have different kinds of units. Uh, so far, these examples have involved calculations with numbers that are exactly the same, uh, in which case they either add together or they multiply out or they subtract or they do whatever. Um, but the example they start with, and I think it's a good example to start with, is uh, speed, okay? Uh, so in this example, they start with uh, any type of speed. I'm going to do uh, kilometers per hour simply because I want to keep it metric. But let's say you're traveling 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, basically what this is meaning is that for every 100 For every 100 kilometers you travel, you are going one hour. Okay, it takes one hour to go that far. Wow, my thing is really... Bear with me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so um, still not exactly sure. Sometimes this pen works really, really well. Other times, not so well. Probably needs a new driver or something. But anyway, um, so I just want to point out that you can mix units. Uh, so they use the example of like you travel... 100 miles in two hours. Sorry, getting different notifications from different places. See, I, I wonder why I can't get it to respond, but it doesn't want to respond. And so what you do there is you get 100 over 2, so 50 is the number, but miles per hour you can't get rid of, so you'll keep miles per hour, which a lot of us are used to seeing as MPH, if I can actually write MPH. Okay. So there's MPH there. 
And this is the type of stuff that, unfortunately, I think a lot of it you're just going to have to do yourself to really be able to work with. Um, and they talk about calculate with precision. We don't really go into significant figures, and that's all on page 54. Um, we don't go into sig figs in this course because you don't need to know them. And it would just add a whole level of complexity to the course that y'all don't need. Sorry. Um, so what we do in this case, uh, basically whatever has the fewest number of uh, decimal places, that's what you want to be able to um, That's what you want to be able to um, write, report your measurement as, and that's, that, that'll work pretty well for us.